ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله الصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه ان خير الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ما ضاع يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى احسب الناس ان يتركوا ان يقولوا امنا وهم لا يؤمنون Allah is stating that do we think that just by claiming iman but by claiming islam it would be enough and Allah will let us go to the paradise just by that this is a flawed understanding that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicating he's saying subhanahu wa ta'ala do you think just by claiming i'm a muslim it would be enough to go to paradise Allah says, "Well, I know you are not going to be shy in the middle of the world, Joe. But in contrast, you will be tested with hunger, fear, so on and so forth. So the point here is, just by mere claim of Islam, or by apparent manifestation of Islam, it won't be enough. You will be tested by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is a price to be paid for this purpose. If you look at the life." in our life of the dunya that everything you do there is a price for it if you want to buy a car there is a price for it you looking for a job the price is the skill for the job you want to be educated you have to go through exams after exams sleepless night of studying years after years <coughs> so that really tells me anything i want to get requires some price and effort behind that So I like to ask myself and you today do you think every little thing of the dunya if it requires a definitive price to go to jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be without any price that's impossible why if you have a car that's good for 20 years if you have a good education you finish the med school you benefit from it about 30 years to 35 years out of that that's what you benefit from it if you have a house you benefit from it until you die but the benefit of jannah remains forever something to get in that magnitude do you think it would be enough just to claim la ilaha illallah apparently not when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala claimed absolute obedience from his servant subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said that wa ma khalaqtu al jannah wal ins illa li abudun allah created us and the jinn only objective is they are obedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala faqat discussion is over and that is the and only objective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when that is not attained that's a failure so how do i attain it and do i have an example to follow the answer is yes and when you do follow the examples which is in the past allah will honor us in the dunya and akhira likewise and one of the bright example in the history of mankind is sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam He faced challenges, faced the trials given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to manifest the message that yes, I'm obedient to Allah. Yes, I'm going to face the test. Yes, I'm to pay the price to go to paradise. Allah has honored him by calling him "Watafat Allah Ibrahim Khalil." It is a claim not from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. We need to understand this. It is not the claim of Ibrahim that I'm a friend of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam. It's not the case. In contrast, it's opposite. The Lord of the Worlds claiming that I have taken Ibrahim as my friend, subhanahu wa taala. To understand this message, the Lord of the Worlds claims a creation, a small creation as his friend. What has he done to come to that level? Any intelligent minds must reflect to that. Why this person raised to that level, and why? What am I today? Because he made a claim and kept his claim. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sallam said, "Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin." All inclusive. He, alaihi salatu wasallam, said that my prayer, my sacrifice, my salat, my life, my death, everything is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and because of that. 
Allah made him a nation, call him father of us. He made a claim that his life, his death, his salah, his sacrifice, all is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can I make a claim like that? Answer is no. If I happen to make a claim like that, can I substantiate it? Can I back it up? Answer is no likewise. Why not? Because we are paying too much price of the dunya at very little time for the price of akhirah. We have very little time to, to the price for akhirah and obsessed with the matters of the dunya and devoting my 24 hours a day for the attainment of the dunya. How do you expect to be successful in front of Allah? And they will be test, my brothers, my sisters. This life will be test and there has to be price. I myself, being an academic, I sometimes see, before the final exam, I see students, subhanAllah. From morning to night, some students study 12, 15, 16 hours a day, just to pass, pass an exam of a semester. It is not an exam for after 4 years, 10 years, or finish your PhD, that's not the case. It is just one semester, one course, students studying 16 hours a day. End of the day, you got A plus or A minus. That is the achievement. I'm not against that. I'm making a point. For one semester, one exam, if you have to devote 16 hours a day, with that degree, you may not even get a chance. But I'd like to ask you this. How many hours, how many sleepless nights have I devoted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a claim in day of judgment? Allah, I paid some price to go to paradise. Every Muslim, if they're <coughs> conscious about themselves, they can open their book and ask themselves, where do I belong? What am I doing? If I'm not doing in this life, self-analysis, if I'm not doing it, Yawm al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to allow me to do my own self-analysis. He is going to say, Kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hashiza. Today you are enough for yourself to see where you belong. The documents in front of you. Take a look and see, this is your good deed, this is your bad day. You make a decision where you're supposed to go. So today, we need to make sure that the amount of time we invest for dunya, in contrast how much we invest. This life is full of tests. Unless we have an example, we cannot relate to the subject matter. Starting with the life of Ibrahim And you know the story. When he first started the Dawah of Tawheed to his people, before I go to that direction, Every message is start from La ilaha illallah. Every da'wah, every introduction to the religion, everything starts from the point of Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, La ilaha illallah. Negations of shirk, establishing of La ilaha illallah Tawheed. And to do that, attainment of the knowledge is number one. Coming back to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the sacrifice the person had to make for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he called his father, to la ilaha illallah. Me first started, Ya abati, lima ta'budu ma la yasma wa la yafsir wa la yafsir wa la yafsir wa Why? Oh my father, why do you worship something which doesn't do anything to you? Neither it can hear nor it can see, neither it can benefit you. His father rejected the message and went against him in a physical confrontation and warned him, if you do not stop, I'll stone you. This is the father talking to the son. Test already started from the point of starting of that. When his father rejected his comb, put him inside the fire. He, a human being like you and me, went inside the fire for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being patient with that. That is the message. He was given a test and he's willing to take the challenge, be patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is unthinkable for us to think that we are going to sit down in the fire and be patient with that. So, us, it is beyond our capacity. But to understand the message, and Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who he claimed that my life, my salah, and my sacrifice, my life, my death, everything for the sake of Allah, as every Muslim must claim, he made such a claim and he manifested it by deeds. So he was into the fire. Now this story is in the Quran for a purpose, for us to reflect. Allah said, Afala yatadabbarun al-Qur'an am ala kulubi Will you not reflect on the Quran? Or there's a lock in your heart. That no matter what you read, doesn't make any sense to you. Doesn't go inside your heart. Heart is blocked. 
So we need to reflect on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said Ibrahim was put into the fire for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was into Islam and because of his claim of Islam, he ended up facing the fire. Now, before going any farther, I'm asking myself, what challenge did I face in my life to claim my life in Allah, to claim Allah, their judgment, that I have done this and this for you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I like to go to paradise because of those things. What have I done in my life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Besides consuming resources in the dunya, what sincerely have I done for Allah? We need to ask ourselves of this thing. So, and the story is there for a point to reflect on. When Ibrahim into the fire, it's not that Allah is going to test him and wait to reward him their judgment. Allah already rewarded him, supported him in the dunya. Allah told the fire. Allah told the fire, be cool and pleasant upon Ibrahim. It is not only cool, it is cool and pleasant. If the AC is cranked to 60 degrees, you feel cold. It's too hot, it's not easy to accept it. It is comfortable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his servant on the spot. It is upon Allah to support the believers. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when Ibrahim manifested his part of Iman, his part of sabr, his part of commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in return Allah gave his part of the reward and support. Now our case, we are far away from those levels. But at least can you not think? Can you not discuss this issue within our families, among our, among our colleagues, to discuss what people before us, what level of sacrifice and commitment they have done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next point on Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Pass test number one. Finish that. Then he alayhi salatu wasalam moves on with life. Allah put another test. You know, sometimes it's easy to give money. Sometimes it's easy to fast. Sometimes it's easy to give up your children. Sometimes it is easy for one person to give one thing, not another thing. Some people say, I'm willing to fast and do a al layl but I'm not giving a penny for the sake of Allah because I love that too much. Another person say, I'm willing to give a lot of money, but I'm not going to do all this extra ibadah that I can't deal with that. Each person is deficient in one way or another. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before calling Ibrahim, Allah said, Inni ja'iluka linnasi imam. Allah made him imam for the mankind, a leader, Ibrahim salam. Before he get this degree, this honor, this title, he had to go through stages after stages of task. He manifested commitment. He manifested patience and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, he earned the prize as he earned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next one when Ibrahim continues his life, his little child was born. He passed his physical test. Now comes to emotional bond with children, with wife and son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him, tells him to drop his wife and the beloved little child, middle of nowhere. I'm not telling stories. We are deriving lessons out of it. So he goes to middle of nowhere. Now, when I say that, it is easy to say it because when you go to Mecca now, you live in a five-star hotel, you go to Tawaf, you go to Safa and Marwa, fully air-conditioned and tiled up. So you really don't understand the essence of the discussion. Imagining yourself, middle of nowhere, no electricity, no water, no bathroom, no shade, no human support, no people to socialize with, nobody to hold hand, with, I mean, there is no support except you and your little child, which is a burden in itself. And the child become hungry. The mother, emotional stress of loneliness, dropped by the husband. Where? Middle of nowhere. Who is around you? Nobody. Now, what can you do by yourself in addition to that? You have a child to take care and you have no substance, no food to support with. Now, not only you cry for your pain, you have to cry for the pain of your child. This is the test. The mother, the son, and the father have to face for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the point that yes, I meant la ilaha illallah. I really meant there is no ilaha but Allah. I meant and committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can I make a claim like that? With my body, my patience? Answer is no. Can I make a claim with my wife, my children? Answer is no. So what claim do I have in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their judgment? None. So we need to think at least. This is a starting point. That am I doing something? If answer is no, should I be doing something? Answer is yes. Where can I start? When can I start? 
today and here. We need to make a commitment to ourselves. Now let's go to the mother, because all the lectures are about men. The women are sometimes forgotten. The sisters, this sister, wife of Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam, middle of nowhere, being patient with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, Jazaun bima sabaru jannata wa harira. Because of their patience, Allah is going to reward them with paradise. So this sister, a sister like you, not supported by anybody else, but depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with a little child, with no support and resources, depending on Allah, running around in Safa and Marwa, looking for something so I can help my child. It's not about me, it's about my child now. Today when you go on Safa and Marwa, you walk, look at your cell phone, you really don't understand what time is it, what is going on. It is just a show for you. The essence is missing. It is dead. It is just a ritual. The Dua people read when they go Safa and Marwa, Half of them don't even know what they're reading and not even paying attention to. Allah is saying Safa and Marwa are signs from Allah. I don't see any sign. I do not see any sign there. It is not a physical sign. It is with the eyes people who can see with. Allah says, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبِ It is not the blindness of eyes, it is the blindness of the heart. So you do Safa and Marwa and repeat, إِنَّ الصَّفَاءُ وَالْمَرْوَةُ مِنْ شَعَرِ اللَّهِ Safa and Marwa is from the sign of Allah, but you don't see a sign. You are the one repeating this over and over again, but you yourself do not see any sign. We need to reflect. What am I reading? And I don't see any sign. The sign is Hajar. She had to run between Safa and Marwa looking for something for the child. She could say to the husband, listen, I'm not down with this program. Your ideas of dropping me somewhere else, you do yourself, forget it, I ain't going there. But she's committed to Allah like the husband is committed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the pain and suffering. Brothers and sisters, another thing to know. Now the thing is over, you know the outcome. Here is the point. Now, the, now you know that they will be supported by Allah. Now you know this Zamzam will be there. Now you know Kaaba will be there. You know the answer already. To you, this is a told story already. But to her, this is unknown. She doesn't know what is coming down the line. For her, it requires patience. To you, story is over, now you know it's going to happen. Hajar did not have the answer at that moment. She had to play it out. And this is sabr. This is dependence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever depends on Allah, Allah is enough for them. And she proved it. He asked me, listen brother, recitation of the Quran is good, but those stuff is too much for me. It's too much for me. So why is this? History is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There must be reason for it. What is the reason for us to reflect in faith? And the next generation must come close to the book of Allah and think and reflect upon those things so they can connect themselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the point again, when Hajar, you know the story of Zamzam, you know later on other people came in the caravans past, the whole community grew there. Today everything is nice. But imagine yourself stranded in a snowy night, in a dark road, with a broken car by yourself. Imagine what level of patience you need just for that. You know somebody is going to come with a car. You are going to get a tow truck soon. But she did not know, is anybody coming to help? Only mere belief. Mere belief that Allah is going to help me. Like was Ibrahim in the fire. Mere belief, just pure belief, Allah is going to do something. What I do not know, but I'm sure he's going to do something. This is purely belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Whoever fears Allah without seeing him, in ghayb. For them there is reward. And they believed in ghayb, unseen, complete reliance and dependence on Allah. Allah helped them. And you know the story. Next point. It is the father, the mother, now the little child. When Ismail grows up, the Alam of Tafsir says by 7 to 10, 10 years old, he was walking around with the father helping. You have a strong bond at that time. The attachment is strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demanding something. Past two was difficult. This one even more difficult than that. Ya bunayya inni arafil manam, anni asbahu from the Oh my son, I see in my dream I'm slaughtering you. What do you think about it? It is a test not for one person, for both. First test of Ibrahim is a test on himself by a person. You in the fire, you are the only one, a victim of this pain. You suffer yourself, nobody else. Next one, the mother suffers. 
the little baby suffers and father watching it suffers too. Now this time, the son, which he per se, left somewhere else. Some people say, you've been, astaghfirullah, but some people say, you didn't take care of your son. You left to somewhere else. Now he grew up, come to you. Now he come with another idea. Idea is he going to kill him? Subhanallah. <coughs> Ajeeb, this is to think. Every Muslim need to open the book of Allah and reflect on it. Need to understand. Allah talks about people who don't do this thing. Allah says, Surah Rum, Surah number 30, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ مُقَافِلُونَ They have people who are expert about the matters of the dunya, but when it comes to religion, they're ignorant. And this is us, by the way. It's not them, it's us. So the book of Allah is for us, not for them. We have a new thing nowadays. All of us read the book of Allah. He said, in there, how can I tell others? You read the book of Allah, how can I tell myself? First, Allah said, Fu anfusakum. Save yourself. This book of Allah is for me. The Sunan is for me. Every Muslim is a da'i, da'wah is for others. Da'wah is for myself. Because if I am not saved in Day of Judgment, what does it matter? Muhammad and Fatima saved Day of Judgment. So it is about me, myself. So first, we need to reflect for ourselves and give some dedicated time in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming back to the point when Ismail alayhi salatu salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want him that to slaughter his son. This is a test on a father reflecting on his son. If you have a son, or at least you have a child, you ask yourself, imagine Allah tells me to do that. Just imagine this. I sit down one time thought, I said, subhanAllah, what if this method remain until today? What if this process of taking your son and, and day of Eid and slaughtering him, if it remain today? Subhanallah, just the very thought terrifies me. Imagine a human being in a conscious mind can take their son somewhere else and trying to slaughter a son. Can you imagine the son you love, son you, your young child, whom you left middle of nowhere many years ago? And Allah said, you got to give him. Allah didn't say you have to fast 60 days, you have to fast six months, you have to stay up night every night for six years. It's not that. Take your son now, throw him out in, 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 in another country, never see him again, or uh, get rid of your wife. It's not that. Don't feed your son for six months. That's something. Kill him by your own hand. Ajit, to understand that intensity, the magnitude of the subject matter. It is not just a story. That is a problem with us. Allah said, Ma what is your problem? Why don't you reflect? Why don't you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and self-analyze our situation? Unless Muslim Ummah come back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, act like Muslim. You know, there is a difference between pretending to be Muslim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, pretending to be a Muslim and being a real Muslim. When the test come in the face, the nifaq manifests itself. Nifaq manifests itself. You ask yourself, I ask myself, if the dunya resonates in my mind, I have a major problem. If the money of the dunya attaches me more, I want that, I want power, I want recognition, I want people to see me, people to listen to me. If that is in my mind, I'm in a major problem that can you think of. So as a Muslim, need to realize and self-analyze before Allah put us into test in the day of judgment. لا يخفى على الله منهم شيء يوم القيامة is nothing hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The book will be opened in public. You have done this May 21st in 2012. 2018, uh, March 21st, you have done that. Everything to the little details will appear in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That day you do not have friends with you. That day you do not have a friend to care for you. You by yourself. So every brother, every sister to think themselves. Exactly what am I doing? What am I doing? What I'm using this life for which Allah gave for a purpose. So many of us into so many different directions. Some are overwhelmed by the dunya, attachment to the dunya. Some are remaining ignorant about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some know about the deen of Allah, not practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some do practice, they're not being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these elements must be right for the final product of iman to be right. It is not only the kalam, 
only the knowledge, only apparent obedience to Allah. It has to be with ikhlas for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon the right manhaj given by Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. If that is not the case, whatever I do is null and void. It is sad, but this is true. So every Muslim now need to find ourselves exactly where I belong. To conclude this section of the discussion, I see a lot of young men and perhaps sisters are there also. We need to see the response of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Young men, all the time we talk about adults. The little child may say, you know, these are grown up. By the time when I grow up, I will be mature enough to make such level of decisions. You're yeah, right. <coughs> Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, when the father said, I am going to slaughter you. The son tells the father. A Nabi, another son is another Nabi. Tell him. If al Ya Abati, oh my beloved father. Look at the language of it. Oh, you have to do it, then do it. Uh -uh. Oh, my beloved father. If you are commanded to do, which is slaughtering me, do it. Satajiduni, inshallah, you will find me patient. See, see, each word has something to do with it. He could have said that, okay, I'm obedient because I can't do anything else. I could do it what he got to do. It's not, oh my father, do it what you commanded to do. Oh my beloved father, it's not anger, it's compliance. Saying, my father, do it, and inshallah you're going to find me among the patients. My brother, the word cannot do justice to this ayat. Wallahi al-Azim, if I could say better words, if I had better understanding, word cannot do justice to this narratives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his kitab. Say, Ya Abati, oh my father, put the blood on my neck, do it, and I'll be patient. You tell your son, this is a father, you lost your mind. But this is a son, this is a child too. What makes this child obedient to Allah? What makes this father obedient to Allah? Why we are so far from him? Many people, 30 years of Ramadan, are going to Hajj one day, recitation of the Quran in the morning, that is the religion. That's part of it, yes. And believe it, being honest with you, that is a very small part of it. Like in academic environment, that is like a student coming to the classroom. That is like a student coming to the classroom, getting full attendance and getting zero every time you take an exam. Person is physically attending the class, emotionally absent from the class. You physically sit in the class for hours, no benefit from it. The Muslim will spend years after years coming to the salawat, going to the hajj, and remaining hungry in month of Ramadan. What if they have judgment? You, may, you do not get anything out of it. So we need to think. Again, those who came late. One of the things is the obligation for the Muslim before anything else to learn the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is wajib. Muslim, kama Allah Attaining the knowledge of the religion is wajib on every Muslim. So some Muslim, the way they make wudu, some they make salah, some talk in the Jummah, some play with the phone in Jummah. This is very sad. If it is a five years old child is doing it, need to be advised and cultured. But if somebody 40 years old doing it, what can I do? It is sad. Need to, we need some revival of the Ummah. So Ummah need to come open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, start learning it and try to reflect on it. So to conclude the matter, number one, Muslim need to learn their religion first. Number two, Muslim have to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn the religion from the right sources. Because many masajid around this neighborhood and many parts of the uh, of the country and other places, they are not upon the sunnah. This is sad. Because they have some weird idea about the religion. They got from the culture and so on and so forth. They need to reject those things and come back to Kitab Sunnah. <laughs> Whoever adds something to the religion, comes with something new to the religion, must stop it, must be rejected. So Muslims need to understand by rectification, by cleaning up, Cleansing this religion from bid'ah and shirk, come back with the and the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a consistent manner. Hopefully this will bring the success of this ummah. A general comment that all of us are busy. We have things to take care of, we understand that, we have responsibilities, Allah is aware of that. And that's why after Jummah, 
Allah said, once you finish your salah, fadiyakuliya bi salati fantashif al ardu al tadumin, fadiyillah. Once you finish your prayer, go to work. Nothing wrong against work. Nothing against work. Nothing wrong against education. Nothing uh, against socializing with people. That's not the point here. Point is, we are doing too much of that and none of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the point here. And what Allah said, وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَكَ اللَّهُ دَارُ الْآخَرِ Allah said, وَبْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَكَ اللَّهُ دَارُ الْآخَرِ Take all your resources, the time, the energy, whatever Allah gave you, focus towards Akhar. Your objective is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Objective is Yawm al-Qiyamah, Yawm al hisab Objective is paradise. Whatever I have to do it, I get to do it. I don't like it, too bad. It's too tough, we have to be patient. Nobody likes it, who cares? Allah likes it, it's good for me. That commitment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that devotion, that the love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when that comes to the mind of the humankind, hopefully they will be successful. So, once you go home today, I will request us, take only 10 minutes with the paper and a pen, to see 24 hours a day, how many minutes of my life have I dedicated for Allah. Besides five hours of salah, that's 20 minutes, 25 minutes, done. Recitation record 10 minutes, okay, 35 minutes. And tasbih, another 20 minutes, second hour. Out of 24 hours, you got only an hour for Allah. That's what you have. And that is in your account, in the of judgment. Imagine this. And that is the objective. Can you fulfill your goal of life? Allah said, that is why I created you to be obedient to me. My ibad. You know that we have 50 times of salah per day. We had that. You know that. Allah reduced to five. Imagine Allah wants you to pray 50 times a day. 50 times a day. That means we meant to be engaged in ibadah continuously. 50 times a salah means every half an hour you have to pray. Pray wudu and make a salah. That means between the salah you have maybe 10 minutes break. Each of the salah. So you've been praying all day. When are you going to work? When are you going to eat? When are you going to sleep? When are you going to go to the restroom? That means the essence of this creation Allah created so you'll be engaged continuously in ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslim need to find the method. While I'm in my job, I'm in certain form of ibadah. I need to find out how can I make the connection. When I go to college, how can I make a connection to make an ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is a way to do it. But you need to find out how can I connect my family, my job, my education, my social activities as part of my ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is done, for the sake of Allah, in the right method, in the right manhaj, inshallah, yes, we are fulfilling the requirement of obedience, being obedient to Allah. And the commitment made by Ibrahim will be in the similar level. He said, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi. That cannot be attained unless you are tested and we have to prepare and train ourselves for that level of test, while inshallah passing that, we go to paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to